Dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission, sharing information, knowledge for soul, body and mind. Dropping gems, KeishaGems.com. KeishaGems.com. Welcome to Just Dropping Gems proud partner of Rude Rangers Unite Entertainment. We can now be found on Roku and on the Rude Rangers app. Be sure to download the app on your iOS or Android devices. Hello and welcome everyone to Just Dropping Gems. I'm so excited today to have Orlina Bandon on my show. Um, she's an educator. She is a professional um, bodybuilder. She's an author. She um, started her own school online and so many more other things. And it's just a pleasure to share space with her today. Welcome, Orlandina, to Just Dropping Gems. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keisha, for having me. I appreciate it. I'm honored. <laughs> and I have to say, Orlandina is actually one of the other stars on um, Rude Rangers TV. Um, she has a show called Muscle and stilettos and it's an amazing show and i am looking forward to um gracing my presence on her show <laughs> yeah yeah you're definitely coming on <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm looking forward to that too so look out for that yes. all right <laughs> Arlindina, you know, what made you um actually um go down this path because as far as i know you are a classroom teacher i am i'm a classroom teacher um i've been teaching math for over 20 Ooh, 22 years. <laughs> I was close to around the time I started teaching. That's fine. Me yeah. close to 20 years. Yes, you see. So I've been doing it for some time. Um, I was going through a really rough time in my life, and um, I used to go to the gym a lot. So I decided just to go to the gym, and it allowed me an opportunity or space to just kind of decompress and just to get out of it um, and stop thinking about it because I was going through a divorce at the time. And by training, I would always come across people that were like, uh, you know, you should think about going into competition. I was like, no, no, you know, I don't have that shape. No, 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 you should think about it. And I think I just decided to up and do it one day. One of my personal trainers I was working with, he was like, just pick a show, find a show, choose a date, and go for it. And I did. I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> And on stage, I was beach body ready, but not competition ready. And um, I did it. And after that, I met a, a true competition coach. And we, we just started to train. And I started to change how I ate. And the thing that I began to notice is not only was my body changing physically, I was becoming stronger, but my mindset was changing. My purpose was changing. And I began to realize, well, if this is doing this for me, how about other women? How would other women feel if they went through that? same um, transformation it may not be in the same way but just giving themselves time just to think and to reflect and to grow and that's what I what that's what began this whole fitter woman because that's how I felt like a fitter woman um, and, and honestly even though I used to I, I named the company the fitter woman I didn't claim it till maybe about two three years ago because I felt like I had to go through such an evolution an evolution and evolution until, so the name was given to me before i could fill in the shoes you know so it's like i had to grow into the fitter woman so that's why when anytime i describe the company i'm like she's organic she's a she's ever evolving ever improving so that's how the fitter woman came to be so nice. just the process of evolution that's why i believe everyone can become a fitter bigger fitter stronger version of their former selves and something you mentioned that I must say that I liked was you talked about mindset. So it wasn't just about um, the, the, your physical. No. But looking at yourself with um, your mind. And I know that like with me personally, I don't like exercising, mm -hmm. but I do it um, because um, I have to put myself in a mindset that this is getting me to become fitter. This is making me stronger. And even at that time, I do um, like affirmations when yes. I while I am exercising. So is that something that you do with your clients as well? Absolutely. I tell my clients to connect. What are we, why are we here? What are we training for? So it's not just your limbs moving, but I want your mind to move along with it. Because the, the whole idea is 
you know, not a lot of people like the gym. And I get that because some people don't want to be in a confined space. They like to move around. But if you're, if, it's, if you're in an area where you cannot get outside and you just got to give yourself the opportunity to move, then you go to the gym. But what I ask my clients to do is I want them to connect to their bodies. If we're working your arms, if we're working your legs, connect to that muscle. You should be thinking about what you're doing and not thinking about anything else except for you because this is your you time, your me time. That's your you time. So yes, that, that, and it changes your mindset because now let's say you were able to do one push up or one pull up. Now you can do 10 push ups and 10 pull ups. Do you know what that does for your mindset and what that does to your level of confidence outside? If I could do this here, what can I do out there? Exactly. And that's what began to happen. And I was like, well, if I could do this here, what can I do out there? And that began to change my mindset. So I'm going to write a book and I'm going to write this and I'm going to do this. Why yes. not? So yes. that's what these things happen. Yeah. And I, I have to really agree with you because even with me, i um, exercising and um, I actually congratulate myself when I complete a set, Good. especially when I feel as though I can't do it or <laughs> I get, and I'm, Oh, that's too hard. But then I just push myself and I do it anyway. Yes. It really does relate what, from the inside and if you think about internally internally yes. like what you're going on in your mind because i um i'm really into a holistic living yes your mindset and then so if you're able to um then exert that externally you could put that in other areas of your life so that's beautiful absolutely if you're able to combine those three components because there's a lot of people who have beautiful bodies they are unhealthy minds unhealthy spirit because their whole definition their whole purpose and being is defined by what they look like and that's a horrible place to be when your worth your self-worth comes from how you look your self-worth comes from within how do you feel about yourself how do you think about yourself all of that when it's in balance everything will come into play you will feel better because your mindset is changing you're going to say you know what I'm, I'm going to choose not to eat that right now because it's not honoring this temple. I'm going to choose not to go into that space because it's not honoring that my temple. I'm going to choose not to keep company with that person or to remove this person from my life because it's no longer honoring my temple. You start to look at yourself. It shifts your perspective. This is no longer some receptacle just taking things in. Exactly. Now you get to be picky. You get to be choosy because you work so hard on yourself mentally and spiritually. One of the things that I say, I was like, I will never allow anybody to speak to me any which way they want because I don't do it. So if I don't allow my own negative self-talk to manifest, why would I let you do it? And these are the things that you start to do when you realize how precious you are. So you go to the gym, you're taking care of this body. We take care of our cars better than we take care of ourselves. So one, <laughs> you know, that oil change, get the car washed and get everything back, right? We do all of that for things that are immaterial. They, they are material things. And us, the most precious thing on earth, we don't do the same thing. That's so true. if we start shifting that mindset, it will affect us and it will actually um, come into play in every aspect of our lives, not just the gym. So the mm -hmm. gym is just a mode of, of becoming powerful and more empowered. Yes, true. And I, I'm even thinking like, um, as far as even as women, we always tend to put ourselves last because we are the nurturers. So that's another thing you even working with women, empowering them and um, showing them that, you know, you do need to put yourself first sometimes. Yes. So as far as self care goes, you talk about um, exercising and mindset. What are, what are some other things you do with your clients? As far as like, um, with um, self care? I ask them to meditate, mm -hmm. just meditating. When you get home, when you wake up in the morning, whether it's your, if your meditation is prayer, if your, if your meditation is an affirmation, but in the beginning of the day, I ask them to set the tone of their day because it just sets everything up for the day. So I ask them to do that uh, while we're training. I ask them to connect to breath, not just to breathe for breathing, but breath to really feel and hear it. So when they're speaking their affirmations in the morning, I'm like, I actually want you to feel the words passing through your lips because you become so connected to what you're saying. So it's not just the physical that we work on. That's that mental. That's the spiritual wellness. 
So I asked them to do those things, to take journals, to keep journals. How are you feeling? Um, a lot of times when we have cravings, we think we're weak. We have no willpower. Not realizing, no, there's a reason why you're feeling that. Exactly. I had one client, she said, you know, I noticed that I have cravings because this is, she's starting to journal. I noticed I have cravings after I have a meeting at work when I can't speak up. Mm. And she looked at, and we looked at her, I looked at her and I said, what do you think that means? She said, I guess I can't speak up. I have to eat my words. So I end up eating other things. So I, I can't speak out. So all of this stuff just gets mm. bottled in. So making that, just that connection, I didn't tell her that. She, through just journaling and having a conversation, she was able to draw that out and say, wow. So it's not that I'm weak-willed, I have no willpower, and I can't. No, there's a reason why you're having these things. So that's why I asked them to journal throughout the day. How are you feeling? When you have that snack, how do you feel? Do you feel better? Do you feel worse? Do you feel guilty? Because all of these things come into play. So weight loss is not just you counting calories. It really is counting your, like, where are you? Where are you spiritually? Where are you mentally? This episode is sponsored by hashtag Pure by Venice. Venice Richards, your Pure Romance consultant, inspires women to enhance their intimate lives and take care of their sexual health. Book your party today. Info in the show notes or description box below if you are watching this on YouTube. You know, being aware of that. So I asked them to become more aware. And what I like to say, because you talked about losing weight, I like to refer to it as releasing it because we tend to um, to carry things and um, and some people it manifests as weight. Mm -hmm. Yes. So definitely releasing that. And I like the fact that um, you're actually doing journaling with your, um, your clients and you're, so basically you're coaching them as well because you're having them come to their own conclusion. Correct. Yeah. Because a lot of times we come to somebody else, look, I have a belly and I want to get rid of it. I have a this and you're coming to somebody else to tell you what to do. So what do they do? I'm going to put you, everybody that comes to me, you're going to go on a 1200 calorie diet. Do you live a 1200 calorie lifestyle? I don't live a 1,200 calorie lifestyle. (laughs) Most people don't live a 1,200 calorie lifestyle. But because you went to someone, they pulled out a book and they said, well, this worked for me and this worked for that person. You're going to think it's worked for you. Then you try it. Not only does it not work, but it caused you to gain more weight. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you were looking outside. You were looking to somebody else to give you the answer. No. All the answers that you need, all the answers that you have are here. So what I do is I coach them into finding it within themselves. Because my thought process is, I'm not going to be with you for the rest of your life. I don't want lifelong clients. I want lifelong community members. I want to teach you how to recognize the signs in yourself. So when you're where you want to be, and you're like, whoa, okay, I'm physically, the weight is where I want it to be. And I agree with you. Don't focus on weight loss. That's one of the things I'm like, stop focusing on weight loss. Focus on being healthy. You know, but. (laughs) Definitely. You know, they want the six pack. I'm like, I get it, but I want you to be healthy. But, you know, you work with people where they are. And what I want them to recognize, oh, when I'm stressed, it makes me want to do this. I recognize that stress. So let me not, let me choose to have a piece of fruit instead of going into that thing, the, the, the pint of haagen Let me not even, if I want ice cream, let me have an ice cream alternative that is not going to create that mucus buildup yeah, and exactly. all the inflammation in my body. Let me choose something else. But I know that this is because I'm feeling stressed. Not I'm sitting in front of the television and just, gobbling it up and you know when you're finished you're like first of all you never even tasted it you don't even know where it went and then you feel guilty and I feel like a failure and all of that just so the whole things I want my clients to hey I'm feeling this right now what can I do right now to change that feeling and shift it so I want that I want you to find the answer for yourself because I'm going to step away and you need to be able to do these things on your own nice um, you know, what's coming to my mind um, is um, eating mindfully. When you talked about uh, definitely um, when you um, 
take the journal with your clients and you have them then write down or do like, I guess they're doing like a food diary. Yes. They're learning. Basically you're teaching them to eat mindfully. Is that something that you do with your clients? Absolutely. Mindful eating. I want you to sit in a quiet space. I want you to put music on. I want you to make that space comfortable. I want you to take your time when you're eating. So I want them to practice mindful eating because a lot of times we're eating on a rush and we just choose. And you don't even recognize that you're full. You don't recognize anything and you just keep eating and you eat beyond what you're supposed to. Yes, I want them to practice mindful eating. What are you eating? How are you feeling when you eat it? Do you feel good? Do you mm -hmm. feel lethargic? Because you might eat broccoli and it makes you feel really bad. Yes, broccoli is good for you, but it may not be good for you. So if you are now saying, you know what, when I eat broccoli, it makes me feel kind of gassy. So I don't want to eat that too much. But when I eat kale, it makes me feel great. So mm. I'm going to eat more kale. And broccoli, I can kind of leave off to the side. Yeah, I know it's good for me, but it's not good for me. Practice that mindful eating. You know what? When I eat, for me, if I eat too many, six ounces of sweet potato. If I eat just a little bit too much, it makes me sleepy. But if I eat this much, I feel great. So you know what? I'm going to just eat this much next time. Mindful eating. Eating at the same time. Let your body know that you're going to be taking this time for yourself. There's no job that is so busy that you cannot take five, ten minutes and go sit in a closet someplace where nobody can bother you. <laughs> I don't care. I know it's busy. Everybody's busy. But we're never too busy to scroll through our phones, to go on Facebook. We're not too busy to go on IG. We're not too busy to, do, to, go, to tweet, to, to do a Twitter. Right? We're not busy to do that, but we're too busy to eat. So switch that time. That hour that you just spent scrolling through people's media pages, you could have sat down and had a good meal and just mm -hmm. have some time for yourself. Exactly. So journaling is really important because you actually, um, it actually shows um, how they are managing their time as well. Correct. You might not even realize how long you're spending on Facebook, how long we are spending on um, these, social, these other social media platforms. So that's really a good point. They're, yes, because they're great, they're great tools to keep us. I mean, you and I, we use it to promote our business. We, we use mm -hmm. it to promote our brands and to connect with people that otherwise we wouldn't be able to communicate with because they're out of state, out of the area, out of the country. Exactly. So it's great. But... But we have to be mindful of how much time it takes up. So when someone tells me I don't have time to spend at the gym or I don't time to don't have time to go for a walk, I'm like, well, how much time did you spend on social media today? And they go, you know, like, oh, <laughs> I didn't think about it. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that time you could have gone for a walk. That time you could have taken a dance class. That time you could have taken a spin. Whatever it is, whatever makes you happy. Whatever move, whatever thing allows you to move, then do that. But yeah, I want them to become more mindful. Even for me, I always have to practice that. When I'm at the gym, the only time you see my phone with me is because I have music on. I'm not texting anybody. I'm not messaging anyone because that's my me time. I want to be focused on what I'm doing. And then when I'm done, I'll communicate with the rest of the world. I'm like, I'm not a surgeon. You don't need me. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yeah. So tell us a little about your, um, your university, Fitter Woman University. Is it so, online? Is it a physical school? It's an online school. Okay. And what we're doing is we are helping women to become healthier on it from a holistic perspective. So what we do is we design a program, a wellness program, specifically to their needs. So I actually have them go and get blood work. We go over their blood work together. Where are you? Is your sugar, or is your A1C meaning, or your, is your sugar really high? Are you approaching uh, being diabetic? Because if that's the case, then I can't give you all these carbs. I got to lower your carbs. So I create your wellness plan according to you and what your needs are. Where are you emotionally? So I, there's a health coaching component. So it's not here, here's a diet, here's a workout, bye, and I'll see you in six weeks. No, I'm coaching you through the whole program. So we start with the basics. We start with your gut health. Mm -hmm. Then we move on into, okay, how are you eating? I literally show them step by step how to become well. And there's that, like I said, there's the health coaching. And then I also give them a workout program. This is how you're going to train. So there's a movement plan. 
there's a health coaching component and then you have the the whole wellness piece the spiritual wellness having them practicing journaling so i have different activities every week set up to help them you know establish a healthy mindset because you and i both know it's not just the physical because if that were the case everybody that went to the gym would be successful right Exactly. They would be successfully losing weight. But I know a lot of people that go to the gym and their bodies are not changing. Why? So that's the other thing, especially for the women. As we approach menopause, our body starts to react differently. And we need to learn how to work with it. And I show them how to do that. And I'm doing that along with a nutritionist. So together we are creating and designing a program specific to you. So what I do with you is not what I'm going to be doing with somebody else, not what I'm going to be with somebody else. So now we learn how your body works. You learn how to work with your body. You're not going to be fighting against it. You're not going to be trying anything else for anyone else. You're going to be working on you. And we coach, we coach as a group model. I love group models for coaching because we can help one another. And then the plan, the fitness plan is for everybody. But what's the difference is that nutrition component because your body needs something different than someone else. Yeah, nice. So it's personalized. Very much so. And I like the fact you're working with the nutritionist because that's what question I was going to ask you. Do you actually do um, meal plans with the, um, your clients? We do. We'll do it with, the, like I said, we have a nutritionist on our hands, so we'll create a meal plan for them. But I'm always very careful about giving people meal plans because what happens I hear is I'm bored. Um, is this the only thing that I can eat? So I give them options. So I mm -hmm. say, here's your list of carbs, your list of proteins, your list of fats, and your list of grains that you can eat from. Any combination of those. So I start them off, and then what I do is I encourage them to kind of, you know, experiment with other grains and experiment with other plants because I really want them to become more plant-based. The, the meal plans is plant-based. It's not vegetarian, but it is plant-based. But if you are someone who doesn't eat meat, you can also take it and change it to, to accommodate your needs, but it's very personalized. And that's what I wanted. I'm like, that's how I saw my own success is because I learned how to listen to my body and eat according to what it needs. And so I want to train my clients to do the same thing. And that's what the Fitter Women University does. We work with the physical, we work with the nutrition, we work with your mindset so that when you're done and we, and we go by season. So every 12 weeks it changes literally according to the season. Nice. So by the time you're done, with three seasons, the last season is you doing it on your own and we're supervising. Does the weather keep you from going outside today? Don't suffer from annoying allergy symptoms. Claim your free gift, www.keishagems.com slash courses. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Dropping Gems Academy is offering certifications that can allow you to turn your investment into a certified holistic practice. Use this introduction course as an all-natural alternative seasonal year-long allergy treatment option. Empowered with knowledge, you can help me spread awareness with the rest of the world. Driven by a passion for holistic studies, after Keisha Christian has listened to your requests and expanded the techniques shared in her acclaimed resource guide, Holistic Gems, how to treat seasonal and year-long allergies naturally into a full online course. The second installment in her published Dropping Gems series has inspired parents, teachers, naturalists, the therapists to reassess the way they handle seasonal allergy symptoms. Now this course will help you do the same. Sign up to get your free gift. The first 10 registrants get 50% off using the code DROPPINGGEMS50 at checkout. Done. You graduate, we have a nice little ceremony for you. We celebrate you and you become part of a community. And now you mentor the other people coming in. Nice, nice. That's really nice. Yeah. I understand also that you are an author. So I am. So you can you tell us about um, some of the books you've written? So I wrote, my first book was called Seasons of Her. I'm currently working on my poetry book. But Seasons of Her is a book that, it's called Seasons of Her, Journey of Womanhood. And it talks about how we as women transition through seasons. Our winter is our time of reflection. Our spring is our time of renewal and rebirth. Our summer is a time where we come out and we display all our colors. And our fall is a time of gratitude and blessings. Now, it all sounds beautiful, but each season comes with it its own set of challenges. In that time of winter when you are reflecting, you can get frozen. 
That's where depression can set in. So we have to be mindful of our time in the winter. And spring, you can get spring frost, where you're starting to come out with these new ideas and then you hear these negative people saying, you can't, you can't, you can't, you freeze up and somebody comes in and stops your growth. So each season comes with its blessings, but also challenges. And our goal is to every season, recognize what season that we're in, mm -hmm. use our time in that season well. There's not one season that's bad. There's no, even in the winter, there's no, there's nothing wrong with being quiet and being reflective it's and, true. you know, being away from people because you need that time to know who you are. I mean, Superman has a fortress of solitude. That's when there's too much going on and he has to step away. We all need that. So what we want to do is be able to say, okay, I'm in my winter season. This is what I'm supposed to be doing now. And it's okay if my energy level is kind of low and I don't really want to be social because this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And there's always something that tells you, hey, the next season is coming and it ushers you into your next season. Now, these seasons are cyclical. You will never, it, it, you will always come through them again and again. And what I notice, at least in my personal opinion and what I've seen in my own personal um, experience, it's starting to actually match up with the calendar season. Okay. It's starting to because I'm becoming more and more connected with myself. So that means I'm becoming more and more in tune with the earth. Yeah. Now, depending on where you are, you may not experience a winter, but there is a season where things must be dormant and lay still. So there's a purpose for each of them. So the book is divided into two sections, pocketbook size. That's what everybody tells me. It's so cute. It's pocketbook size. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the first half explains each season. And the second part are journals. So there's a oh. journal, journal questions for the winter, journal questions for the spring, and uh, each season after. I have a journal that have uh, affirmations for each season. So just once you read it, you'll know what season that you're in. So. That's the book. And what's happening now is I'm able to add to it. The more I live it, I'm able to add to it. So there's going to be another edition coming out. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what I want to ask you is you talked about seasons. So some women, um, what they might think is that if you're, if we are currently in winter, then you're in the winter season. Is it possible that we could be in spring and then you're, you're, you personally are, might be in winter? Absolutely. You can definitely be in the spring. It, you're it, outside, it looks like spring, but inside you still feel very quiet and you feel very withdrawn because you're still thinking and you're contemplating. As long as you're using that time to do what you need to do, that's fine. It's okay if it doesn't match up because I think that as you become to begin in sync, you're becoming in sync with your body, I think it will. But if not, that's okay. But as long as you're using your time, recognizing what you're in and then moving accordingly to that season. So if you're in your winter season, you're not in party mode. So don't go out and party. You don't have to. Just take that time to say, okay, I think this is, the, for me, the winter is your time to start learning what your heart sounds like. Really, truly understand what your intuition feels like. When your heart, because a lot of times we ignore our instincts. We come across someone that we really shouldn't have in our company, but we want to be nice. Yeah. Meanwhile, your instincts are saying, no you know but we want to be nice so we have to learn to say trust our instincts and say hey it's a pleasure to meet you and keep it moving because if you invite that person I mean if the animals in the wild didn't listen to their instincts they'd be dead very quick yes <laughs> <laughs> they would die very quickly so we need to pay attention to that and that's what that book was all about was just learning to listen to ourselves and recognize where we are so we can act accordingly, letting go when we need to let go, bringing in, because you got to let go in order to receive new blessings. This is true. Right? So in your fall, that's your time to let go of a lot of stuff. That's the time, even though, yes, it's beautiful, harvest season, we're taking in things. But as you're harvesting, think about it. The, I, I have a line or a, a sentence in the, in the harvest season that says, now the true layout of, her, of, your, of your land is clear. Yes. Once you've harvested everything, now you can see the true landscape. What's diseased? What's healthy? What has root rot? What died? And so you know what you need to take out and, and just discard and what you can continue to grow. Exactly. 
I even think about like a tree. Um, at that time, a tree loses its leaves mm-hmm. or it releases them. Exactly. Yeah. So because it's, it's, this season is done. Mm-hmm. And it's, okay. it's a healthy thing. Like you said, it's your time to release. You can't keep everything. You can't keep mm-hmm. everyone because you're transitioning into another time in your life. You can't keep everyone. So the, the, the trees have to release the leaves so that it allows the energy to not focus on the roots, which is the most important part of the plant. Exactly. So you got to release extra people. You know, those people that are just draining, you got to let them go. But we want to be nice. We don't hold them. No, you got to let them go so you can focus on your root, on you, when you're with it, so that your next season, you're stronger and not being drained by all these extraneous things. Yeah. So as I said, the fitter woman is all about, it's a holistic approach to wellness it's not just go to the gym lift this many reps and eat this many calories it's more to it than that because we're more complex yes yeah, so true so true so um tell me a, a more about your other books you mentioned that you had some other books coming out no yes i'm working on a book of poetry because um i write poetry i'm actually a performance poet oh, a spoken nice. word artist. so i've had a lot of people like i want you to write your poetry i'm like okay because i usually just perform it so I'm a spoken word artist and a lot, all my poetry really has, is of a spiritual nature and it talks about connection and balance and being connected to, to God or the universe, however you wish to call her or him, but just having that ultimate connection. So, um, so one of the ones that I always perform is I am, that's why I wear this necklace. I am all the time just because I believe those are the most powerful words in the universe Yes, they, they are. They manifest whatever you know, whatever comes after. So, so those those poems, I'm putting them. I'm going to be writing a book and just putting them together. It's called oh. the Book of I Am. So, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You are multi talented. My <laughs> goodness, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> God, I'm like really this too. You'll be coming up. <laughs> That is beautiful. So, the book of I am. So I'm like, sometimes I'm like, okay, I don't know where you want me to go with this, but I'm going with it. I'm going to rock with it. So that's what I've learned with my life. Just, just roll with it. Try it. What's the worst that can happen? If nobody yeah. likes it. That's okay. I like it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's true. And you could turn around and say, I did that. <laughs> exactly. I did it. It's okay. Yeah. No regrets. <laughs> nope. Not at all. <laughs> So I wanted you to um, talk a little bit about your show, um, Muscle and um, Stilettos. What exactly is this about? When, when does it come on? So tell our audience a little about that. So Muscles and Stilettos is pretty much the voice of the fitter woman. It's the questions that people ask all the time. They want to get information about. That's the platform that I'm using to just answer any questions related to fitness, wellness, spiritual health. Um, anything like that. So it's broken up into three parts. Fitter Stories, where I interview the women that are part of the Fitter Women University. And the reason why I did that is because I want other women to see there's someone like you that's on that journey alongside you. So by them sharing their story, sharing their journey, it encourages other women to see I'm not alone. Mm. So it's Fitter Stories. The second part of the show is called Connections, and that's when I bring health and wellness professionals on and I interview them and they talk about the services that they offer. Because a lot of people have questions about certain aspects of wellness. So for example, if you have a child with special needs um, and you want your child to be able to move, you want to know who specializes in that. Mm -hmm. Just because their special needs doesn't mean they have to be at home all day. What are some things that we can do? Um, what are some, like my last interview was about gut health and the, its importance to your overall health and how poor gut health can actually lead to you not being able to see successful um, fitness and health goals because your yeah. gut health has been compromised. Um, so just bringing that education piece. And then the last part is called Stronger. And that is a nod to women who we define as strong, what have they done in the community. So these are women that have been nominated and their names sent in and their stories told so that people can hear about these stronger women. So just to encourage women and to celebrate women and, and their accomplishments. So that's Muscles and Stilettos. And the title came from an incident that happened over the summer where a gentleman, well, I 
I loosely call him a gentleman. <laughs> but he's male. <laughs> he actually came up to me and asked me, are you a woman? Because he saw my muscles. And I said to him, excuse me? He said, yeah, you know, you got a, you kind of diesel. You know, are you a woman? I said, what would make you question whether I'm my femininity, whether or not I'm a woman? And so I had to really read him. And I had to say to him, you know what? At the end of all that, look, I wear my muscles and my stilettos. A woman can be strong and be muscular and still be feminine because yeah. we are strong. That's, that's who we are. So that's where that came from. So I'm like, I always want to celebrate womanhood. No woman should be afraid of her physical appearance. And, and no woman should be judged by her physical appearance because she doesn't look a certain way or is expected to look a certain way. I'm a woman because I said I am a woman. I don't care what you think I should look like, whether I should be a size two or 22, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm a woman because I said so. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. This episode is sponsored by hashtag Pure Romance by Venice. Venice Richards, your Pure Romance consultant, inspires women to enhance their intimate lives and take care of their sexual health. Book your party today. Info in the show notes or description box below if you are watching this on YouTube. I love what you're doing. It's beautiful. Yeah. Really empowering women and um, taking the holistic approach to doing so. Correct. I say I commend you and I love it. And just continue doing it. Thank just you continue. so much. And that's why I want to bring you on because you speak to it so well and you speak about it so much. I'm like, I need to have you on because this is wellness. And this is what it means to be a woman sharing information. This mm -hmm. whole concept of being under the red tent from the, there's a book called the red tent and they mm -hmm. speak about the women who come together under the red tent to share information. This is why I always want to, you know, if I, I meet another woman and she's doing something, I'm like, man, we need to know more about this. I want to bring you on. I want to share. I want to encourage because that's what we're supposed to do. Not to tear each other down. We're supposed to encourage each other. That's why I'm so happy and so proud of you. I listen to dropping gems and just hearing what you have to say and, and your, 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 um, the people that you've interviewed, I've even referred to your show because there was something that you spoke on that was so appropriate to what I was speaking on in Muscles and Stilettos. So oh, I'm yeah, like, your first episode, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I was like, oh, my God, you know, I have to talk about this. So this is what we do. We share. We grow together. So yes, and by doing that, we help the family, too. So it's not I love men. Sorry, guys, I do love you, but it's by helping the woman, we help the family unit. So. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, thank you so much, Orlandina, for coming on, Just Dropping Gems. I am so happy to have you on, and I had a great time um, talking with you. I had a you pleasure speaking with you, too. You have any last words or um, closing remarks that you sure. want to leave with the audience? Well, this is what I tell everyone. If you want to know the best fitness and wellness tip ever, first question you always ask yourself is what I'm about to do honoring my temple. Mm. If you yeah. ask yourself that question, you will know what to do next. You will know what to eat next. You will know what to, who to bring in and who to kick out. If you start with that premise, am I honoring this temple? Is that going to honor my temple? that will begin your journey towards wellness and fitness. And if you have any questions, you can find me at www.thefitterwoman.com. You can also email me at thefitterwoman.com. And then my social media handle is The Fitter Woman. And my show is called Muscles and Stilettos, and it airs every Wednesday, second and fourth, except for this, this Wednesday, because I have a Christmas concert. But it airs, <laughs> <laughs> it airs on Wednesdays. And um, you can just follow my social media and you'll find when the next episode will be. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And to our viewing audience and those who are listening to us on um, various podcast um, platforms, thank you so much for listening. Peace and blessings to you and much abundance. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Just Dropping Gems proud partner of Rude Rangers United Entertainment. 
we can be found on Roku and on the Rood Rangers app, which can be downloaded on your iOS or Android devices. This episode has been sponsored by Dropping Gems Publishing and Dropping Gems Academy. Be sure to visit our website where we offer holistic solutions with the soul in mind. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at DroppingGems.com. If you are interested in being a sponsor or advertising on this show, you can contact us at KeishaChristian.com or email us at KeishaGems at gmail.com. Much abundance to you. Peace and blessings.